2022. Members' motion with no legislative effects. Mr. Pew, Mr. Tanker Pew will move a motion on reforming the property alleviation policies and strategies of Hong Kong. Eight members will move amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Tanka Pew to speak and move the motion. Then I will call upon Mrs. Regina Ape, Mr. Stanley Ng, Mr. Dennis Leung, Mr. Stanley Lee, Dr. Priscilla Leung, Mr. Lam Chen Singh, Ms. Yunus Gyeong, and Mr. Tang Fei to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. Members who wish to speak, please use the raise hand feature of Zoom to so indicate. Please watch the timer on the Zoom screen as you speak. When your speaking time is up, I will ask you to stop speaking. Staff, please clear all the raise hand indications. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please, please use the raise hand feature of Zoom to so indicate. And now call upon Mr. Bill Tang to speak and move the motion. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Today, I move um, the debate uh, on reforming the property elevation policies and strategies of Hong Kong. It was uh, supposed to be debated on uh, the 26th of January because of the epidemic, uh, it um, has been delayed for 70 days. During the period, I um, have um, uh, gone into uh, the neighborhoods that will support the um, residents and I have um, a more um, deep learning of the uh, situation of poverty. Now, we shouldn't focus on uh, debating um, on the uh, on whether we should set the property line and um, for an individual at four thousand dollars, we should look at the real uh, plight of the people and uh, take actions. The COVID nineteen situation has worsened our poverty situation, and we need to um, give more help to poor people. It seems that the virus um, is indiscriminate in um, affecting us all. However, um, people in different classes um, would. Um, uh, uh, handle the epidemic uh, differently. For richer patients, uh, they can practice a home uh, isolation. Uh, they can uh, sleep in separate rooms and um, call and uh, order takeaways uh, for each meal. For grassroots people living in SDU uh, flags, they have to leave the flags at once. Close contacts or patients even have to uh, sleep rough on the streets. That's because of inadequate housing. Multiple families are sharing uh, the sharing kitchens and toilets that uh, there can be no uh, effective um, separation. And also there is the real concerns of um, loss of employment. Once infected, you cannot work and um, the boss uh, may um, ask them to stop coming to work. And also um, grassroots people cannot afford uh, the, the um, higher prices. Back in uh, February, uh, when the situation was bad, uh, RAT kits uh, cost $100. Um, and many employees are requested to take a test before they come to work, so they have to um, um, pay for it. Uh, medications, uh, food and vegetables, um, everything uh, is more expensive. Poor people are suffering. Has the government uh, con uh, control uh, prices? Now we we have to um, review um, the uh, poverty stand, uh, poverty uh, line, as well as how we can achieve um, alleviation of poverty. The more important thing is the government has to be more committed in uh, alleviating uh, poverty and take actions to narrow the uh, wealth gap and um, ensure that people from different, uh, different classes would have access to um, a basic um, standard of um, quality of life in terms of uh, tra uh, transport, uh, public services, and so on. In short, we have to, off we have to ensure that people um, feel happy and uh, protected. Well, the grassroots people have been hard hit um, under the epidemic. Now we have um, some um, 70,000 uh, people um, following and 
news about um, cheap lunch um, on Facebook. Well, um, twenty it costs a twenty to thirty dollars, and then you have you have a uh, two uh, dishes in your lunchbox. This is um, uh, something welcomed by the um, by people by poor people. Now, because of the um, higher prices, and um, people only uh, wants to um, have um, want to uh, can only uh, hope to fill their stomach. Now, um, retail, catering, construction, uh, transport sectors. Um, they they employ more than a million employees put together, and they don't. Uh, these employees don't earn much, and they enjoy a very limited um, employee protection. Now, uh, after um, the temporary unemployment and relief scheme um, uh, began to accept um, application, um, there were uh, already uh, hundreds of thousands of applications. We also have to ensure that uh, there is adequate uh, childcare services to ensure that um, employ uh, poor workers can uh, continue to work. There are people. Um, we have to alleviate the um, working poverty uh, problem, and we have to protect shops. And um, we, a city um, of high um, uh, of a, a thriving and value-added uh, industry. Now the uh, GDP, uh, the uh, local GDP is uh, three hundred sixty thousand dollars in year two thousand twenty twenty two, and it has uh, it has doubled compared with the um, uh, with uh, some years ago. However, the living standard has not seen um, obvious uh, improvements. Uh, the per capita uh, living area is only one hundred sixty one square uh, square feet, much lower than uh, Singapore, Japan, and Shenzhen. The uh, real income has actually uh, plunged. In the past 10 years, um, there was only a 1% increase yearly. How, however, um, flex prices has risen by 130% in the past 10 years. The public cannot share the uh, wealth and um, capitals are held uh, by the uh, rich and powerful and it really uh, widened the wealth gap. There are two um, latest sets of figures discussed by um, the panel uh, by the uh, panel on manpower or uh, by the panel uh, by the um, FAP. The uh, top 100 uh, taxpayers are eligible um, to the tax concessions um, hold uh, a, uh, a staggering 19,400 units. And also we have um, one, uh, some 194 um, ultra rich, they have um, more than $230 million at hand for investments. Well, the um, affordability, uh, that's the, the number rank a second uh, um, after New York. We have a 1.65 million uh, poor people on the other hand, that is a, a 10 year high. However, the government only defines the government defines um, people earning more than four thousand four hundred dollars per month um, not poor. The um, discrepancy between um, between the uh, line and the reality is ever uh, widening. Now, the government has to take up the role to uh, redistribute wealth and uh, take care of people's livelihood. The administration should enhance uh, different um, policies, and uh, most importantly, housing and um, medical, medical health care. But we should uh, draw reference um, to the UN's um, standard. Now the pain, the, uh, the pain point in Hong Kong is housing. Now people are living in smaller and smaller flags. However, they are more and more um, um, luxurious uh, flags on display uh, on um, on television. It is like uh, an alternate um, universe. We should enhance um, public housing and we should, shouldn't we uh, um, give um, people in Hong Kong a larger living space? The FTU has uh, called for bidding farewell to uh, SDUs by 2023. We have to solve the housing issue so that people can feel the improvements in the economy. Well, um, 
a free person, a free uh, members, a household who are earning more than $18,000, uh, they are not um, considered poor. However, what if they are living uh, in, a, in an SD unit um, with uh, 120 square feet? Uh, Hong Kong is said to be a, an advanced city with um, advanced medical health care. However, with the, with the epidemic, um, it revealed um, the uh, plight in uh, residential care homes with poor facilities. Uh, once there is an, a spread of the virus, uh, many elderly people um, um, fell ill. Now, uh, the per capita uh, residents, the per capita space uh, for elderly uh, residents uh, is only eight meters square. Uh, in Japan, it is a 19 meters square. The waiting time for um, a and ED as well as outpatient clinic and specialist uh, outpatient clinic uh, is getting longer and longer affecting elderly people's livelihood. And also um, the fifth wave uh, has um, toppled our healthcare system. Rather than debating uh, on um, the access limit, we should um, offer a comprehensive uh, primary healthcare uh, scheme for elderly people and ensure that um, elderly people's uh, liv uh, uh, livelihood needs are satisfied. Most poor people in Hong Kong are elderly people. We have to improve the retirement system and also we have to catch up in terms of our medical and care for elderly people. Presidents, in the past, some officials claim that because we, are, we have adopted the uh, relative poverty uh, concepts, that's why we cannot we can never eliminate the poverty. However, we have to make sure that um, public services are accessible to all and um, fair um, career opportunities. Uh, these are all uh, factors that people can feel. So the government should uh, take um, a 3D um, review in, sorry, your time is up. Elimination of poverty, reduction of poverty, um, and also um, called prosperity. It should be um, the um, guiding light uh, for the government. I hope that um, the new, the upcoming uh, term of the government can uh, alleviate the poverty issue. I, I call for your support. Thank you. I'll now propose a question to you that Mr. Tenka feels will should be passed, Mrs. Regina Ip. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I would like to thank Mr. Tenka Pew for moving this motion on reforming the poverty alleviation policies and strategies of Hong Kong. I'm very much agree that the poverty policy in Hong Kong needs a reform. Uh, first of all, we shouldn't say uh, call it a poverty alleviation. Many years ago, when Ms. Henry Han was a member said, sitting next to me, she always said eradicating poverty. Now, of course, it's uh, probably impossible to eradicate uh, poverty. No country could achieve that. But, you know, reducing poverty or helping living people out of poverty, that's uh, much more realistic. Uh, the, our country is doing very well on that front. Some 90 million uh, rural uh, population has been lifted out of poverty. Now, if we talk about um, um, relative poverty, then there's no way we could reduce uh, poverty if we adopt this concept. What is meant by relative poverty? That is uh, before uh, tax um, uh, discounting tax, then 50% of uh, the uh, those of a certain median household income would be regarded as the poor. So that means 50% of the population would be considered a poor population. But then when the economy um, develops rapidly, then there will be more poor people. That's why a few years ago, people complained the government, uh, you know, uh, tried to help the poor, but then more people came, became the poor. And there's an explanation for that, because when the economy is doing well, then um, commodity prices go up. And then for the CSSA and other subsidy schemes, uh, they could not really keep up with the price changes and the increase in uh, living cost. So if uh, the median income is higher, then there are more people considered to be poor. The uh, government wanted to, uh, co uh, you know, appease the social workers and they wanted to achieve, uh, uh, reach an agreement. So now I don't really like to, um, you know, um, use political labeling, but most, um, you know, of the social workers in the pan democratic camp has been pushing for that. And in fact, uh, for two big countries, uh, the USA and the China, they use the, the definition of absolute poverty, that is uh, the, the basic um, cost of living. 
And so with that, then we could help people out of poverty. But then instead we follow the uh, practice of U European countries, which are welfare states. And so we adopt the uh, concept of relative poverty. And so uh, all the government can do is to use pu public funds to help the poor. Now um, we have the 2020 uh, poverty situation report. And at a time uh, with some um, policy intervention, we could reduce the poor population by 7.9%. But then from what people could see is that uh, in 2020, we have a poor population of 1.65. Um, uh, that's an increase of 120,000 people per, uh, increase per year, which is, uh, which is a 20, uh, 20, 12-year high. So it's with policy intervention, the pop, uh, poor population actually went up. Um, in particular, we're talking about um, non-recurrent um, um, tax reductions and so on. And then in 2020, there was a cash disbursement and then um, then we have the anti-epidemic fund, uh, additional um, sec social security. So the government has to spend lavishly, but then this cannot be sustained because uh, we know we have a structural fiscal deficit. Uh, according to the financial secretary, he mentioned the fiscal deficit figure in the budget. And that's been actually massaged in a way because uh, that, uh, that he didn't count of the $20 billion coming back from the housing fund and so on. So this year, the deficit is actually higher than that suggested in the budget. And this is not something that can be sustained. I agree with uh, Mr. Lung King Ming, an economist. Now, instead of uh, giving people fish, we should teach people to fish. So um, uh, the pol poverty policy should be should not be about giving money to the poor. Instead of giving money to the poor, we should help uh, people to enhance, uh, upgrade their skills, improve their education level, and uh, there could be new um, policies on different sectors on improving people's um, housing condition. So that's why I very much um, um, appreciate the um, various amendments put forward by members. They have a um, precise approach in helping the poor, uh, definitely. The SDU tenants uh, households are certainly considered uh, poor uh, today uh, a friend um, you know received uh, information about some um, living in a transitional housing unit 90 square feet and the rent is five thousand five hundred dollars so you can imagine this is really tough the SDU tenants must be the first that we support if we just uh, give out money indiscriminately that is, if you stay in public housing, you will get rent uh, concessions. Uh, of, that's not actually a precise approach because people living in public housing estates are the better off in the sense. If I may remind members, as you speak, please watch the timer on the screen. When your speaking time is up, there is actually a flashing um, image to, to alert you to that. Mr. Sani, mm, thank you. Madam Deputy, last year the country announced um, the policy for um, full poverty alleviation. This is a very the major initiative. Even the UN Secretary General applauded that. So for by 2020, we have the sustainable development agenda. So this is in line with that. That means we could build a better world. So the, China is making a huge contribution in that sense. Um, so this is a, a remarkable achievement on the part of China. And that brings hope to the international community. So for the 2020 uh, sustainable development agenda, we're not going to leave a single person behind. Um, everyone in a country uh, and for every sector in a country we will have indicators to eradicate poverty so the country manages to achieve that 10 years ahead of the original plan and then so we've lifted 770 million people out of poverty that's 70 uh, percent of the uh, poor population so our country's successful experience tells us as long as we have the resolve and the uh, uh, precise target and as long as we um, persist in our effort and then we could uh, uh, you know lift people out of poverty in a precise manner now the system on the mainland sort of is different but still it has always to be about the people so in that sense the governance philosophy should be similar 
Hong Kong is a well-off city. Our GDP per capita is 49,036 US dollars. We are amongst the, the top uh, ranking places in that sense. But then we also have the biggest uh, wealth gap. Now we have a GDP per capita of some 50,000 US dollars, but then we um, have a um, poor population of over 1 million. For, so that means in one uh, in every seven Hong Kong residents uh, is um, considered a poor. And this is really a, sh a shame on Hong Kong. And um, for the um, poverty alleviation experience of the, of the mainland, is something we could look at. We need to consider the, the resolution. Now in um, Hong Kong, we have various um, defects in our policy, pol pol poverty policy. That's why people become poorer. For example, the government set up the um, community care fund in 2011. At a time, the uh, thinking was uh, to have the private sector taking helping out in help, uh, helping the poor, is to bring in new thinking so that uh, measures would be more flexible. That's um, mentioned in the policy address in 2020 to 2010 to 2011. So it's supposed to be a tripartite um, commitment. Now the government gave uh, $20 billion. The business sector only gave $1.8 billion, uh, billion. The so-called um, active participation by the public didn't really happen. So, and that we don't see any new thinking. The only thing is that it helped to pluck certain loopholes, but then um, this is not a precise way to help the poor. So, uh, and then it's just a drop in the pocket. It doesn't really achieve its intended aims. So that's why uh, we want to, the government to do more with uh, poverty alleviation. First, it must be precise. And secondly, it must be targeted. And thirdly, it must be accountable to the public. And then, uh, it needs to substantially uh, improve the standard of living of the, of the grassroots sector. So that's why I have put forward um, um, dedicated, the suggestion of a dedicated poverty alleviation strategy. And then also we need to have subs, uh, set a subsistence living protection line so that we could achieve our poverty alleviation targets. And then we also need to create a dedicated commissioner for poverty elevation post. There should be uh, someone dedicated to the task. And then there has to be provision of affordable housing for, and then for SDU tenants and grassroots families, they should be given um, subsidies and and uh, we need to uh, strengthen the support for, of grassroots uh, families and help them improve their uh, quality of living. Uh, you have used up the time, please stop speaking. If I may remind members again, uh, you have five minutes to speak. Now we have a Zoom meeting, so please watch the timer on the screen. As you have spoken for about four minutes, um, you will see the uh, clock, um, the timers flashing. And at five minutes, I'll stop you from speaking. Mr. Leung, Chi Wing. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy, as uh, uh, Mrs. Tennis Leung. Now, um, the government has been formulating a poverty elevation policy, but it's not been working well. This has been a problem bothering Hong Kong for years, especially uh, with the epidemic the poor families are not able to help themselves. With the fifth wave of the epidemic, we can see that uh, there will be worsening of the poverty problem in Hong Kong. So the government needs to reform its poverty alleviation policy direction. For example, the minimum wage should be reviewed every year. And we need a multi-pronged approach uh, to er eradicate poverty. Now the FTU has always been fighting for um, reviewing the uh, minimum wage, uh, standard minimum wage every uh, year that would to give the um, salary class more protection. And this is actually the first uh, phase of a wealth redistribution because we don't want people's wages to be too low. And, and more importantly, we need to give protection to those who earn the lowest wage, but who want to rely on themselves. We need to give them uh, protection and so they can live with dignity. 
But then uh, after we've implemented the SMWO, um, statutory minimum wage, uh, we, there's review only every two years and it cannot really keep up with inflation. So in 2013, 2015, 2017, 2019, there were adju upward adjustments of SMWO uh, on these four uh, occasions. And, and then, yes, the adjustment is not very different than the inflation, but still uh, the um, employees only get um, wage uh, um, adjustment every two years. And that means uh, for one of the two years, they will have to suffer. Um, with a higher inflation, a higher prices. And also there are various problems with the current system. Um, em employees are not given due protection for the uh, effort they make. And uh, for last year's inflation and this year's uh, economic condition are considered as a package. So they bundle together. If we consider the local economy, that means um, the uh, rise in interest of um, employees will depend on the economic development of Hong Kong. For example, during the epidemic, um, the government has chosen the SMW. So there's only adjustments possible again in May 2023. That means uh, uh, employees have not uh, seen any wage increase for four years. How is that protection of their rise in interest? Now, for the chief executive and principal officials, their wages are adjusted every year in line with the um, consumer price index. But then for the grassroots workers, their wage only reviewed every two years. So is there a class um, um, consideration here? So I, so we want uh, the uh, SMW to be reviewed every one year. And then you should um, review the way it's reviewed. And also the government has to um, formulate policies to make sure there is wealth redistribution and wealth will be returned to the public. Hong Kong is definitely a well-developed capitalist society and that's why there is extreme poverty and there's a wide health wealth gap. But then with um, such a class conflicts, it will not uh, benefit the healthy development of Hong Kong. If uh, the um, uh, if we, the government is uh, determined to um, narrow the wealth gap, then there has to be second pillar of uh, wealth redistribution. That means some um, tax uh, station system reform. Um, the FTU believes that the public should show the responsibilities in helping redistribute wealth. Now, um, we have asked the government to um, say create the uh, capital gain tax and also for businesses with a high profit margin, with a high profit, they should uh, pay an extra percent of tax. And also there should be the, the new taxes um, um, uh, should be used on um, alleviating poverty. And also we asked the government to reconsider um, um, the estate duty tax again. In 2006, the um, estate duty tax was abolished. And so there's some uh, continuous accumulation of wealth uh, uh, for the upper class. And then it's more difficult to address the wealth gap. So we don't want to, to, to have a few people dominating the wealth of Hong Kong. So uh, we, we shouldn't allow the wealth gap to worsen any further. So I hope the SL government will we have the determination to eradicate poverty. It should adopt a multi-pronged approach um, um, worth redistribution. We need to address the wealth gap so that uh, there is co-prosperity for all. So I speak. Thank you. Mr. Stanley Lee. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First of all, I thank uh, Mr. Bill Tang for moving the motion of reforming the poverty alleviation policies and strategies of Hong Kong so that we can explore how we can eliminate um, poverty. Um, According to the latest poverty situation reports, um, the poverty popula poor population has reached 1.653 million people, and the poverty rate uh, has reached 23.6%. Uh, that is, uh, one in four persons uh, uh, is poor. The government has uh, rolled out a, a multi prone um, measures. However, after interve intervention, there is still uh, 550,000 uh, pe poor people. Of course, um, there is the factor of the epidemic, uh, which um, um, increased uh, the unemployment rate. Um, however, the, uh, we, on, um, we only take into account the uh, income of one person. If one person um, falls uh, behind below the uh, poverty line, then the entire family uh, will be counted as poor. To deal with uh, poverty, the government has um, done some uh, something to uh, help. In years 2017 and 18, uh, the government um, 
uh, investment in uh, capital works uh, was 65.8 uh, billion dollars in year 2020 and 21. It has uh, risen to 105.7 billion dollars. Now it is um, uh, a major increase in re uh, recurrent spending, but the problem is uh, given um, the government's determination, how come the poverty situation still worsened? I think it is because the government uh, lacks um, strategy, uh, targets, and a vision. The government lacks um, a strategy. Now the, gov the government uh, focuses, uh, relies on um, cash um, allowances, and uh, the in terms of a uh, calculation of poverty, um, it only takes takes into account uh, the uh, family income and, and uh, disregard um, other um, security um, measures. Now, after the uh, fifth round of the AEF, um, the money has been dispersed. However, uh, the unemployment situation uh, still remains a fear. Cash allowance is only a temporary measure. It only serves um, a short-term purpose. It will not address the poverty situation in the long run. The second problem is that the lack of um, a target. Now, um, the CSSA uh, scheme only encourage um, CSSA recipients to uh, get employed. The on, uh, only four thousand um, dollars income would be uh, disregarded as income. So, is that enough an incentive? The um, DAB urges the governments to um, to offer um, a full package, uh, tailor made. Um, to um, the um, service recipients to build up um, their uh, skills as well as their financial independence so that they can leave uh, the CSSA and network. However, the government uh, lacks uh, a roadmap and target um, to help uh, CSSA recipients um, to rise above their poverty. Now, Situations in the rural areas in the mainland um, is even more serious than Hong Kong. However, with a targeted um, alleviation measures, the entire village can be lifted uh, out of poverty. Why can't we do that? The third problem is uh, the lack of vision. The government overly relies on the financial services and the property as development sector rather than expanding our uh, uh, economy structure so that the grassroots people uh, can have higher income. The uh, wealth gap is uh, ever widening and also there is a cross-generational uh, poverty situation. Many people in uh, twilight um, industries, as well as the people um, uh, are only supported by people with passion. However, under the epidemic, um, nearly all of them uh, have been wiped out. To address these three problems, it is not easy. So in my amendments, I have moved uh, some um, short, medium, and long-term uh, suggestions, for example, enhancements of the Working Family Allowance Scheme. Under the uh, current situation, when uh, employees are underemployed and are forced to take a no-pay leave, the government has to introduce uh, underemployment um, relief uh, to support uh, um, uh, families uh, in working poverty. And also, the government should um, um, uh, change the uh, review of a, min a minimum wage to um, yearly review. Uh, thank you, I so submit. Dr. Priscilla Lang. President, today we are discussing how we reform Hong Kong's poverty alleviation strategies. I think um, the key is that our approach must be targeted. President C mentioned that um, there are six elements to the targeted approach. Um, we need targeted strategies, use of funds, deployment of manpower, um, as well as targeted results. And this is something Hong Kong must learn from. From 2016 to 19, our nation has spent some 380 billion in poverty alleviation and um, dedicated um, government officials have been deployed and they have offered specific support to industries such that the um, villages can become self-reliant. And in 2016, um, China announced that um, they have improved um, wealth since President Xi assumed um, office. We have already overcome the issue of absolute poverty. 
as for the, the success story of our nation, it has been mentioned by a number of lawmakers. And I think there are a few areas Hong Kong can learn from. It's more than just giving out money. It's about maximizing the strengths of the people so that they can um, step out of poverty instead of relying, relying on external support. And the target uh, and the, the approach must be targeted. So e eventually, um, if we want to see results, we must have a targeted approach. As for the poor population in Hong Kong, I think um, statistics are one of the indicators to reflect the government's work. In the past, we conducted a population census every 10 years and we would have a by census in between. From 2012, the Hong Kong Poverty Situation Report was published on a yearly basis. In 2021, um, Mr. Xiao Baolong said Hong Kong should bid farewell to poverty. For the 2012 um, term of the government, a number of surveys were conducted. And in 2014, 15, and 16, respectively, um, SDUs were studied. And subsequently, there was a population by census. For the current term government, um, we only um, discuss or touch upon tenancy control for subdivided units. I think. Um, this is just a drop in the bucket. I'd like to share some figures and I hope that in the future, the government can provide accurate statistics for reference. When we visited those who live in subdivided units, we knew that parents wanted their children to have good education, go to university and such their family can step out of poverty. Some single parent families had um, members who need to take care of family members or children and as such, they were not able to go to work. So if we are able to re release some productivity from these households, um, we can provide a pathway for them to quit poverty. The business sector can think about how they can contribute to the housing issue and they can offer support and funds as well. For instance, in the area of vaccination, in terms of releasing the product productivity of retirees, this is um, one way. Um, to help. They can offer tutorial services to poor children and on the part of the government, apart from offering cash, they should um, mobilize NGOs and the business sector, as well as employees from various companies to work with the government to work with the government and the AOs can lead their respective teams in making visits to SDUs or even experienced living in those units. Then they can find out what the specific needs of the tenants are. So a targeted approach can help our next generation and we can finally bid farewell to SDUs. Thank you, Mr. Lam Chan Singh. President. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Bill Tang for moving this motion and allow us to have a debate on the issue of poverty. According to the Census and Statistics Department, in 2020, the poor population in Hong Kong was 1.65 million. In other words, for every four persons, um, there was uh, one under the poverty line. COVID has affected many industries heavily Unemployment once rose to as high as 7.2%. The prices of groceries, properties, healthcare, um, rents, commuting all went up. The statutory minimum wage last year was frozen for the first time at $37.5 per hour. And um, the grassroots were finding it hard to make ends meet. I agree with the original motion in establishing um, clear objectives for poverty alleviation, and we must have a targeted approach. The government lacks long-term planning. Our industries 
are not diverse enough, and these are among the reasons for creating poverty. The government often says, says that public housing is one of the most effective measures in tackling poverty. However, um, waiting time for public rental housing is getting longer and longer. Many grassroots families had to um, spend a, a big part of their income in renting um, private properties or even SEUs. The government has proposed splitting the Transport and Housing Bureau and to amend the legislation to increase land supply, to use modular integration, integrated construction to speed up housing construction. The government should um, set clear targets so that we can monitor the progress. COVID has um, exposed our, um, the um, concentrated nature of our industries. Under um, COVID, growth in our four pillar industries load, even though our key industries still made up 55% of our GDP, apart from the financial sector, the three other pillar industries, that is tourism, um, transport and logistics, professional services, um, employment sizes have dwindled for um, two services industries, that is um, logistics and freight. Um, they started um, shrinking since two years ago. Among the four killer industries, um, only the financial services industry showed resilience while the three other pillar industries were in decline. Tourism has been um, in the deep freeze for two years. And by 2020, the number of tourists dropped to only 40,000. And um, most productivity um, stayed in the low value added industries. We are relying too heavily on services and our young people have limited choices and limited upward mobility. On the long run, the government should continue to seek um, new drivers to our economy. For instance, by promoting reindustrialization and enhance, um, enhancing support on emerging industries such as um, green tech, um, food technology, the government should pro provide greater upward mobility for our young people and to support the upgrading of skills by employees and to improve the employment situation as a whole. The government should um, adjust minimum statutory wage upwards within a short time and to um, increase the level of child allowance under the working family allowance scheme. And so I speak, thank you. Ms. Yong Hoi Yan. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'm grateful to Mr. Chen Kapil for moving this motion so that members can uh, chip in their wisdom in this poverty issue. The purpose of my amendment is to urge the administration to focus on child poverty because uh, child poverty can have a profound impact on their future development or uh, the whole life uh, can be affected and this can cause a vicious cycle leading to interdepartmental uh, intergenerational poverty. In 2020, according to the report on poverty, after government uh, intervention, uh, child poverty uh, accounted for 270,000 or 27.5% uh, is uh, up um, compared with the figures in 2019. This is worrying. And uh, it is said that they have a few characteristics. Uh, usually these households are bigger and they uh, have a high percentage of um, single parents or new arrivals. And uh, the um, amount, uh, the working poor, about 90% of them have got only one uh, working family member. 41% of the families uh, may only work part-time and usually they are of a lower education level and they can only engage in uh, low-skill jobs and 
That's why their income is usually lower. They are particularly hard hit by the epidemic in the past two years. The government mainly provides uh, social assistance, uh, CSSA and uh, education and working allowance. And a one-off um, relief measures have been implemented. One agree that these are useful in helping our poor families to address their imminent needs. However, we, if we rely on these alone, we can't be effective. We must uh, enhance uh, protection in all regard. Uh, we must enhance childcare service, medical and healthcare services, and education. They should be given um, a tutorial uh, lessons in the homework so that uh, the parents can uh, work and ensure stable income, or there can be higher level of subsidy in medical and health care to alleviate their financial hardship. On the long term, the government must ensure the learning needs of uh, poor children so that they can make, uh, they can earn high wages in the future. The government should ensure that they have sufficient uh, online learning resources. They can be uh, given uh, breakfast and lunch. However, there are families in Hong Kong that are um, hidden. They are. Uh, they don't have access to information or resources in society. They work hard to uh, make ends meet. They are not aware of um, supporting measures available, and uh, very often, uh, one voluntary groups cannot access them as well. The ethnic minorities, for example, are those that need help most in society. Uh, we cannot provide sufficient uh, support to families. The government should set up a sufficiently a sound a data bank, and uh, we should have big data so that we know uh, the parents that are in greatest need so that our measures can be targeted and policies must be implemented as soon as possible to be effective. As regards to setting up of a database, I think we should make good use of our school network because as schools are um, uh, in contact with children, they can uh, have uh, information uh, involving this children and uh, pass it to the government. So that through schools, we can understand the uh, family background of children to identify those who need help the government must not allow our poverty uh, problems to aggravate. Child poverty must be faced up to squarely because uh, this is a long-term issue. It can last for decades if the government do not offer sufficient help and uh, we won't uh, have any ultimate solution to poverty and they can cause a vicious cycle. Lastly, I hope members can support my amendment with these remarks. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Kang Fei. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I also want to thank Mr. Tang Ka Piu uh, for moving this motion so that we can have opportunity to discuss the problem of poverty in Hong Kong. And we can also uh, review the um, poverty alleviation measures of uh, the government. I support Mr. Tang Ka Piu's motion. We should have a more comprehensive plan to alleviate poverty and it should be implementable. Now I'd like to comment on cross-generational poverty in particular. That means uh, in a family, there is at least uh, one uh, child that is poor. According to the uh, UN Convention on uh, Rights of Child, well, children have uh, rights of development as well as survival, and they should be given a similar chances of opportunity or of a development in school. Now, uh, we have a, a reformed education system, so uh, we do not just rely on one examination to determine the future of a child. Now, in addition to intellectual development, uh, children uh, need to take part in extracurricular activities, exchange uh, programs, etc. Now this will have uh, impact on uh, the uh, child's um, promotion uh, to secondary and tertiary education. And such activities are also indispensable because uh, they can provide all round learning. Now for poor families, their children, uh, well, uh, they um, suffer 
at the start of life, they cannot afford tutorials uh, for uh, school education, and they are also uh, denied access to um, a wide range of activities, whether held locally or overseas. They don't have enough funds to join them. Through a community care fund, the government provides short-term reliefs to poor families so that children can have extra resources for learning. But usually they are given subsidy to attend theme parks and uh, this is uh, too consumption based. The government should have a comprehensive objective of development for children so that at different stages of education, uh, we should consider the um, elements and uh, everything included in all around education. And then in every year's poverty situation report, the children, I mean, the government can see how much assistance can be rendered and public resources should be used to help these uh, poor children uh, to make up for uh, the um, shortage in funds. So that whether we talk about further education opportunities and future development, they will not lose out. I hope members can support Mr. Tang's motion as well as my amendment. Thank you. Secretary for Labor and Welfare. Madam Deputy, I thank Mr. Bill Tang for moving this very important motion. And I'd like to thank the eight other members for moving amendments to allow Dutch Go to have a debate on this very important issue. Mr. Bill, Mr. Bill Tang's motion and the amendments proposed by other members cover a vast number of areas and involve the work of many policy bureaus. So as part of the accountability team of the government, I hereby express the basic stance of the government and provide responses, as well as I, our current vision, overall direction and key policies in the area of poverty alleviation and to um, pave the way for our ensuing debate. Alleviating poverty and helping the poor are among the priorities of the current term government. The CE's mission is to respect the ability of the public to become self-reliant and to provide education as well as training and retraining for those who are capable to work, for those who can fend for themselves. Appropriate assistance will be offered through a sustainable welfare policy to ensure that the social security and welfare systems are reasonable and sustainable while the government supports economic development and allow different people to share the fruits of development through different economic activities um, to improve their lives. The CE's vision provides steer to the government's poverty alleviation policy and work and could be manifested across different policy areas. And I will highlight some of our work. Employment is an important means to tackling poverty. Through promoting economic development, the government encourages those who are capable to work to become self-reliant through employment and improve their lives. The National 14 Five-Year Plan paves a clear direction for Hong Kong's future development <clears throat> to provide support in elevating the international financial aviation and trade center status for Hong Kong and to create an international Law and Dispute Resolution Services Center in Asia Pacific and four new areas were proposed, including supporting Hong Kong's de development as an international aviation hub, the development of an international innovation technology center, a regional IP trading hub, and an East meets West culture and art exchange center. These were the results of efforts by the SAL government down the years in enhancing our industries and we have received endorsement from the central government in multiple areas. The government continue to work with different sectors to develop our industries and to grasp the opportunities under the 45 year plan. The suggestions from members in the motion, including employment for all, enhancing the quality of human resources and overall um, em employee remuneration were long-standing policies of the government. The Labor Department has been adopting a multi-pronged approach to provide comprehensive and free employment support to job seekers of different backgrounds, as well as academic qualifications, including older individuals and women. 
and through different employment programs, support has been offered to those who face difficulties finding a job. The employee retrain employee retraining board has provided employment support and retraining services and rolled out the love upgrading special scheme to provide allowance and training for affected employees so that they could upgrade their skills. And while encouraging those who are capable to work and become self-reliant, the government has offered different support measures to provide safety net to needy individuals. The comprehensive social security allowance scheme provides a final safety net for those who cannot become economically or financially independent. For instance, due to um, illness, age, disability, unemployment, lack of income, etc. And between 2012 to 18, our economy experienced a moderate growth and the labor market remained largely steady and the number of CSSA recipients showed a declining trend. It showed that the public could gain income through employment and did not have to rely on the safety net. However, since the third quarter of 2019, our economy entered recession and unemployment climbed. In 2020, the number of CSSA applications due to unemployment grew substantially by more than 60% compared with 2018. It showed that CSSA played the role of safety net um, at a time of economic downturn. And to um, and in line with the government's policy to encourage people to become self-reliant through employment, the current term government rolled out the Working Family Allowance Scheme on the basis of the former Low Income Family Allowance Scheme to provide support to working households with long working hours and low income who are not CSSA re recipients under the um, principle of rewarding hard work and allowance is offered based on the number of working hours. The government also installed improvement measures to WFA by substantially increasing the allowance levels and relaxing the application criteria. And there are different support measures such as old age allowance scheme and old age allowance as well as disability allowance. It shows the government's care to different groups. Hong Kong practices capitalism and while maintaining a simple tax regime and low tax rates, the current term government has been proactive and has been spending as needed. On a macroscopic level through income redistribution, the government has provided different public services and it, show, it ensures that the public will not lack care due to a lack of financial means. In terms of overall public expenditure, in 2022 to 23, the budget um, or the estimates made up 27% of Hong Kong's GDP, much higher than 90% in 2017 to 18. And for the three main components of livelihood expenditure, that is education, social welfare, and healthcare, government recurrent expenditure went from 208 billion in 2017 to 18 to 341.6 billion in 2022 to 23. In terms of public housing, under the long-term housing strategy, the current term government increased the share of public housing from 60 to 70 percent and this is among our strategies to um, reinforce the sharing of economic and financial foods through public housing. The current term government also attached great importance to education. In the past years, recurrent expenditure and unit student costs have increased in the area of education so that um, all students regardless of family background can benefit from the resources invested by the government. The Education Bureau has offered a series of student financial assistance and subsidy programs to better support grassroots children or students so that they would not be impeded from receiving education due to a lack of financial means. And in line with international practice in 2013, the government has established the official poverty line for the first time using the principle of relative poverty in order to monitor the local poverty situation. According to the Hong Kong Poverty Situation Report 2020 announced in November, including um, the recurrent cash, non-recurrent cash, and non and non-cash welfare items for public housing, 1.1 million people have 
left poverty in 2020 and the poor population was 550,000. Um, the, the, um, the achievement um, was the best on record. Most groups, including children, young people and elderly people, as well as um, working households, CSSA households and new immigrants experienced different levels of improvement in 2020 and the poverty rates um, recorded declines compared with 2019. It shows that the government's measures in tackling poverty have achieved results. The government has implemented a number of poverty alleviation measures to offer timely support to needy individuals. We will continue to use a scientific approach and measure the um, results of our initiatives to tackle poverty. We will take in members' views and offer a final response in due course. Thank you. Ms. Maggie Chen. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I'm grateful to Mr. Tanka Pu for moving this uh, motion on poverty alleviation. I support this motion. Now, I'd like to talk about common prosperity. Uh, this issue of uh, common prosperity uh, moved by the country and how under one country, two system, we can have a proper plan for poverty alleviation so that the next term of government uh, can uh, be more uh, people-based. I watch a documentary on poverty alleviation. A mainland entrepreneur um, invested in a remote rural area of the country, uh, bringing in a sophisticated and advanced uh, uh, machinery and technology and funds. And uh, so, of course, uh, the uh, villages uh, there were very hardworking and uh, the area moved out of poverty successfully uh, to commend the efforts of the entrepreneur. Uh, the government gave him a plot of land to work on. Now, we are going to have a new term of government very soon. We must have a new um, philosophy of governance to address uh, this imbalance in development and wealth gap. Now, we have uh, this uh, bureaucracy, bureaucratic system that relies too heavily on uh, positive uh, non-intervention. I think uh, they think they think that the government or the market will find a balance point, but uh, under the principle of uh, small government and big market, we have seen issues of poverty. We must follow the footstep of our country and realize the concept of common prosperity. Now, we have to uh, look at uh, common prosperity and uh, equal prosperity are not the same. Now, for common prosperity, we'll talk about uh, the relative rich in the, in, in, in the community to help uh, the disadvantaged to develop. Now, Hong Kong, should have the proper uh, rationale in governance in terms of social and economic and uh, ecological aspects. We must have better planning uh, because uh, uh, those who work out will be rewarded and we must have people oriented. The SL government should not just provide a favorable environment for realizing common prosperity. Different sectors of the society and uh, uh, businesses should be encouraged uh, to uh, engage in uh, charity work, take um, women employment as an example. Now the uh, support and training given to uh, working women. Now, uh, some housewives may want to join the workforce again and very often, in job training still um, is still confined to low skilled areas. Well, uh, women need training and nurturing that can catch up with uh, new developments. And so they can have some um, INT development as well. And of course, uh, we also need uh, convenient and proper childcare services so that we can take care of uh, the various needs of uh, women. Now, I'd like to talk about our young people. Knowledge can change your fate. Young people need upward mobility and, uh, and hard work should be awarded. But then our education do not focus on vocational training. Uh, those who cannot fare well in uh, academic aspects 
will then lose confidence because they cannot do well in uh, the uh, conventional education system. They um, may uh, lose the chance of moving upwards. Besides, uh, our curricula of um, post-secondary education is too uh, uniformed. We are not catching up with our global development. So we must ensure that students of different caliber and aptitude can uh, start at the uh, same starting point. This is very important. So uh, this uh, positive non-intervention policy doesn't have any regard uh, for uh, human beings. Uh, this just look at the outbreak at elderly care homes and also uh, going to the community. I think uh, we are not helping our children. So we must uh, build up a sense of common prosperity. We must uh, enhance our identity, uh, our national identity. And we should uh, have the sense of uh, helping one another so that we can all have the sense of happiness. Thank you. Now, all along, uh, we uh, care for um, poverty. poverty. Uh, social workers help the poor. We do not have any political consideration. We just want a just and caring society. In 2005, the um, SL government set up this uh, commission on poverty. I uh, was lucky enough uh, to be part of uh, the commission the move uh, raised high expectations from the community. It's a very uh, high level uh, commission was chaired by the, the financial secretary and uh, bureau directors uh, were also on the commission. And then uh, different departments were involved. There were interdepartmental efforts. And then uh, we I looked at the question of poverty alleviation from three aspects. First, the economy and education. Second, uh, training and education. Third, uh, social security and support. In 2007, we uh, compiled a report and the uh, commission uh, uh, was then disbanded and we left the work uh, to departments to implement. In 2012, the government was committed to helping the poor and so the commission was reconvened. Unfortunately, after so many years, we still feel that Hong Kong still has uh, poverty in society and this is far from desirable. Hong Kong is an international city. We rank number one in terms of competitiveness. We have a uh, we may have uh, the highest number of uh, luxury cars in Hong Kong. I will not talk about the figures anymore as they have been quoted by members often enough. We still see our elderly persons uh, scavenging uh, for uh, cardboards in our streets. We see subdivided units and we've seen people who uh, eat um, uh, food left over from other customers uh, uh, at fast food shops. Hong Kong is a world-class city, and yet there are still so many people uh, who are not living a dignified life. Does that mean that our work to alleviate poverty is a success? Since 2005 to 2021, it's been 16 years. And my conclusion is that the government's attempt to tackle poverty is a failure. And the reasons are simple because as said by members, there is no target, no strategy, uh, no specific and effective measures. And how come this is the case? I think uh, the reasons are simple because our officials do not have any heart. I listened very carefully to what the secretary said on the government's rationale on poverty alleviation. He repeated uh, the uh, policies and measures um, of the government once again. Now, if those things were effective, if uh, they had resolved poverty in the community, we would not have needed this debate at all. Now, tens of, um, a few dozens of members are waiting to speak. That means they expect much more from the government in this area of work. Now, Secretary, I hope you understand that 
It's not that we do not appreciate what you have done. We want the government to do more to benefit more people so that we can have a fairer and a more just society. I speak to support the original motion and all the amendments because uh, we share the uh, same goals. Uh, the spirit is common. And uh, for the technical arrangements, of course, uh, we can um, talk about them further. Professor Sun Dong, Madam Deputy, first, I'd like to express my support for Mr. Tang Kapu's motion. Eight members have already moved amendments and I also support their amendments. Why are we um, uh, discussing this issue year after year? I think uh, this is really something for us to uh, consider. Now, I think uh, it's a miracle that we are still facing this problem. I think we should learn from the mainland's uh, practice. I have, the I have three things to say. First, uh, we must have a strong leadership. Now, in the mainland, they have uh, this hard and uh, very solid targets of alleviating poverty. And the performance of officials in this regard is packed to their um, career prospects. Secondly, we must have uh, targeted strategies. In a number of the amendments, I uh, see the term targeted poverty alleviation. I cannot agree more. We must be targeted to ensure that resources can be effectively used in uh, areas of greatest need. Thirdly, I think we must uh, deploy all resources available in society to help the poor. In the past, uh, we rely on public resources to help the poor. And uh, we can only provide some relief in some uh, specific areas. For the mainland, in addition to uh, resources from the central authorities, um, wealthy businesses also help. We can consider doing the same. For instance, uh, some um, very profitable businesses can also help. And um, for those are willing to show more commitment, the government can consider giving them more room for development. And the government should also consider um, including uh, some of uh, the specific areas to help. Thank you. Mr. Ngan Man Yu. Ma'am Deputy, I speak in support of Mr. Bill Tang's motion and the amendment um, proposed by Mr. Stanley Lee. As a small and open economy, Hong Kong's wealth gap has been one of the worst in the world. And the reason is that the government has failed to properly redistribute health uh, wealth, and that led to a wide wealth gap as well as issues with social justice. Let's take Kun Tong as an example. It has overtaken um, Shem Shui Po as the poorest district in Hong Kong. Whether you look at the poor population or the pre-intervention poverty rate, it is um, highest in Hong Kong. As a district councillor in Hong Kong for um, years, we I have been addressing the um, poverty situation in Kuntong and um, the situation has not changed much for years. It shows that the government's um, strategies have not brought about specific improvements. Um, there are few characteristics to poverty in Hong Kong. We have a lot of public housing, single parent families, elderly people, new arrivals. However, um, in income um, levels are relatively low. So poverty in Kuntong is a planning issue. The government has lacked commitment in tackling the problem. The government has always said that um, poor um, districts were due to uh, a higher proportion of single parent 
families or poor children. The government knew about these issues a long time ago. We have been asking for child care um, or uh, child care centers, but no additional facilities were introduced. Did the government try to release the productivity in women for single parent families since they have to take care of their, their children? It's hard for them to um, find work. Did the um, district personnel ever propose how um, poverty could be alleviated in the district? So we see that um, the poorer um, districts will continue to be poor. The government has always been um, using um, piecemeal measures to um, patch up the problems the temporary unemployment relief can um, offer short-term respite for the unemployed. During COVID, the government has urged employers to retain um, jobs. And the result was that many people were underemployed, but they were not eligible for unemployment relief. So these um, were forgotten people, and I'm sure um, many of these unemployed would feel aggrieved. These were people um, not covered by the current measures, so the government should provide them with some kind of financial support. Very often the policy bureaus would use a top-down approach in establishing poverty alleviation measures for Hong Kong without paying attention to details. But very often, success depends on the details. To tackle poverty, the government should pay more attention to district poverty and their reasons. But very often, the officials um, would only pay attention to execution and as such, um, the district specific problems have worsened and the poverty, poverty never went away. In Kuntong, many people um, think that over the past 10 years, the government has been trying to turn the industrial area into a commercial area and more and more people are working in Kuntong. Um, it, there are probably more than 400,000 and more or less, this has increased prices in Kuntong, but for the grassroots living in Kuntong, most of them do not work here. So they cannot um, share the fruits of success under energizing Kowloon East. Prices have been going up in the last 10 years. Your time is up. Ms. Doreen Kong. Thank you. Madam Deputy. I speak in support of Mr. Bill Tang's motion. From the government's past statistics, we saw that since 2009, Hong Kong's poor population only saw a temporary decline in 2010 and 2011. Starting from 2012, the, the poor population kept climbing, um, which was regrettable. From 2012 to 20. 22, um, over the past 10 years, what have we done to tackle poverty in Hong Kong? Since 2012, well, the, the COP was established in 2012 and we are at the fourth term already. Apparently, um, the commission has a limited role in uh, arresting and tackling poverty for important livelihood issues such as housing, healthcare, and poverty alleviation, the government should show commitment rather than um, deferring its duties to the commission. In terms of poverty alleviation, in order to tackle the issue, we must embrace three strategies. First, the government should establish a clear policy framework on poverty alleviation. The framework should include policy objectives, the um, segments targeted 
such as the elderly, PWDs, women and children, and the government must clarify the um, targets or objectives by phases. In the past 10 years, despite the presence of the COP, no clear work directions were offered. And as such, um, there was a mismatch of resources and um, the measures have been piecemeal. If we want to truly tackle poverty, the government should um, draw up relevant legislation. Current um, labor legislation offers some kind of protection to low income employees, but as a whole, we do not have targeted legislation on poverty alleviation. Um, tackling and alleviating um, poverty should be a concrete policy and we must no longer be passive. Poverty related legislation is nothing new. In many developed countries, they would um, often draw poverty related legislation and that would advise relevant manpower policies together with specific targets. The key is to introduce a review mechanism and um, introduce accountability. In some countries, some um, legislation has been drawn up for certain um, groups or segments such as children living under poverty. This is imminent and it will show the government's commitment in tackling poverty in Hong Kong. If wearing of masks was made mandatory by law, why can't we do the same in um, tackling poverty? The current um, approach in tackling poverty must be subject to review. I believe the relevant approach and measures were lacking. They were not targeted or accurate enough, which led to a constant rise in the poor population. As a prosperous um, international financial center, um, poverty is a tragedy for Hong Kong and no one um, wants to um, watch this episode. And the problem only got worse in the last two years. Many children, women and elderly people in poor families have suffered even more. I urge the government to seriously consider Mr. Bill Tang's motion. Thank you very much. Mr. Rock Chen. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Bill Tang for moving his original motion and for the eight other members for moving amendments. For a long time, Hong Kong has experienced deep seated problems, such, such as the homogenous industries, um, tight supply of housing a widening wealth gap and um, limited upward mobility. So <clears throat> urging the government to improve the redistribution mechanism and to narrow the wealth gap, which allows um, everyone to share the fruits of economic development. I agree that we should have a timely review on the redistribution mechanism. The DAP, um, propose um, introducing a reform to Hong Kong. Only through a reform can we achieve um, long-term prosperity and um, this sustainable um, implementation of one country, two systems. We, in face of the fifth wave of the pandemic, industries have been hit hard and many people have been seriously affected. Foreign um, businesses and um, manpower have experienced a drain. Even though I support the original motion and the majority of amendments, Mr. Dennis Leung proposed um, exploring in the introduction of different taxes. I have my reservations. The proposal did not consider the potential impact on our economy as well as um, our competitive external landscape, given um, the current economic landscape, 
the introduction of a negative income tax, capital gains tax, estate duty, idle land tax, et cetera, um, is not appropriate at this point in time to tackle poverty, apart from relying on the government's tax and welfare policies, we must maintain the pros prosperous development of our economy over the medium to long term and to diversify our industries and offer more employment opportunities for all and to um, upgrade the skills of our um, laborers. That way we can truly tackle poverty. So um, the focus should be on reviving the economy. Myself and the DB, DAB believe that over the short to medium term, Hong Kong should be prudent in reviewing the tax regime. And at this stage, we would not support Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment. Thank you very much. Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. Madam Deputy. As I'm grateful to Mr. Tang Kap Yu for moving his original motion and also uh, the other members who moved amendments. I'm sure we all agree with the uh, objective and uh, direction of the original motion. Indeed, poverty is worsening in Hong Kong. The wealth gap is widening and uh, we have deep rooted conflicts in Hong Kong as a result. This is an indisputable fact. We only rely on public resources to help. And I think um, this um, is no longer working. The government must review its uh, strategies and policies in poverty alleviation and reform as necessary. So uh, what kind of reform are we talking about? As uh, mentioned by some members in their amendments, the government should formally specific targets for uh, tackling the poverty problem and uh, should have policies to introduce common prosperity. We should improve our social security system and help the uh, poor working families. And we should formally measures targeting at different groups of different needs of different groups. For instance, we should enhance support for subdivided unit households so that they can say goodbye to SDUs as early as possible. And for uh, our children and our young people, we should provide more support to prevent uh, this becoming um, an intergenerational problem. I have no objection to these measures. Now, for some of the measures mentioned in the amendments, I do have reservation. Mr. Stanley mm, asked the government to set a subsistence living protection line. I think we have to think twice and look at the possible possible policy implications. As regards uh, Mr. Dennis Leung's amendment, he is very aggressive. Uh, for instance, he wants the minimum wage to be reviewed once every year, and then uh, the wage adjustment mechanism should be improved and then uh, for uh, enterprises uh, making uh, more than a hundred million dollars per year they should uh, pay another one percent of profits tax he often he also talked about introducing new taxes such as uh, capital gains tax negative income tax estate duty and idle land tax as a um, uh, group representing the business sector uh, dpa do not uh, do not agree to such proposals and uh, any new labor policies must uh, have the consensus of both the labor and employer sector. And as for introduction of new source, new taxes, there should be proper discussion in society first. Uh, robbing the rich to help the poor is never an effective way to alleviate poverty and it goes against uh, the principle of fairness. We must ensure that we will not uh, lose out as a result because the measures can backfire. Now, we can learn from the successful experience of our country. Uh, since uh, the uh, reforms, the government, I mean, the uh, CCP has wanted uh, to build a relatively affluent society. Since um, 2012 to 2022, after eight years of uh, Hard work presidency has uh, led uh, this war uh, against poverty into triumph. Uh, 
I think close to 100 million people in Hong in China have now uh, been lifted of poverty. I think uh, we have uh, this historic um, resolution of poverty. Some of the measures and policies are used in Hong Kong as well. The most important one is to think of ways and means to have uh, different industries that suit the times and we must enhance the skills of uh, the of our people and that is to it's better to teach men how to fish than to give them a fish to be meaningful in helping the poor we must have uh, measures to target the problem at source, we must enhance um, diversification of uh, economic activities and uh, we should grasp the opportunities brought about by Greater Bay development and we to ensure that everyone can enjoy the fruits of prosperity. This can help to prevent intergenerational poverty and we can gradually uh, move towards this target of common prosperity. Thank you. Mr. Chen Pui Leung, Madam Deputy, the wealth gap is a problem that has plagued our society for a long time. Although the government has launched various measures to alleviate poverty and has also uh, deployed resources to help our um, poor population is still high, the Guinea Co the Guinea coefficient is high as 0 0.539 and is already a fact that we have a big wealth gap here. According to the uh, Poverty Situation Report 2020, we had 1.653 million people in Hong Kong were poor. One out of every four uh, persons in Hong Kong was poor. And this situation is worrying. In recent years, uh, elderly working and uh, young uh, youth poverty are rising. The government has got a basket of uh, either current or recurrent um, cash assistance. Why are we helping the poor, but yet they cannot be lifted out of poverty? We lack focus. Is it because our policies are wrong or our philosophy is wrong? These measures undertaken by the government might uh, provide immediate relief, but they cannot resolve the problem at risk, at source, and they're not addressing the cause of poverty. Now, because of uh, land and housing issues, grassroots do not have adequate housing, and they have to pay very high rents for accommodation. The uh, money spent on housing is excessive. As a result, money left for the children, education and uh, food is limited. And people cannot then invest their limited resources into the future of uh, their children. As a result, we have intergenerational poverty. After the epidemic has eased, or perhaps um, the economy will revive, but we still have a problem. And the minimum wage has been frozen for a few years and I can anticipate a rising um, poverty, poor population. As far back as in 1965, the colonial government um, announced a blueprint on um, social welfare. The, pilot, the report said that the government had the responsibility to take care uh, for those who cannot fend for themselves. And in the long term, it is the government's, uh, it is the family's uh, responsibility. I think it's all because of the governing philosophy of um, positive non intervention. However, when we uh, take pride in economic growth in Hong Kong, we uh, overlook the need for different groups of society to share the fruits of prosperity and a wealth creation instead of wealth distribution is the consensus among the community. Now for uh, many poor people, they have been, uh, they, they are the collateral damage of economic development in Hong Kong. Now, well, we, I th think we must take care of the needs of the poor. Same from the first chief executive, Mr. Sixtone, in 2000, uh, mentioned the question of uh, poverty. He wanted to help the uh, 
low income families. And in 2011, we have the minimum statutory wage ordinance. And in 2012, uh, we had the, um, the Commissioner on Poverty Alleviation. And uh, the road is still long for us to resolve this problem. The uh, current policies are limited in effect. We must review our policies and philosophy. We must monitor the uh, situation. We must set up targets and improve our measures and uh, review their effects. I think uh, this uh, should be an urgent task for the community in helping the poor. With these remarks, I support Mr. Tang Kampu's motion. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I want to thank uh, Mr. Tankarbu for moving the motion. The epidemic has uh, been fluctuating and uh, this has aggravated poverty in society. The poverty among the poor is especially poor. According to the Poverty Situation Report 2020, before uh, any policy intervention, uh, 16.6% 16 .6 of uh, the group aged between 80 and 90 were poor, up 2.5% compared to what it was in 2019. Uh, with the uh, epidemic, um, the uh, unemployment rate among our young people has uh, risen as close to 6%. Uh, very soon, um, it's graduation time for our young people and I'm afraid that unemployment among young people will continue to rise. While we have unemployment allowance, uh, as well as uh, consumption voucher to improve the situation, we must have comprehensive policies. First, I hope the administration can consider um, finding a more way out and more ways out and to improve our mobility. We cannot just uh, rely on social welfare. We must promote full employment. The original motion asks us to take care of uh, the elderly and uh, also women. We must not overlook the needs of young people. Our economic structure is uh, very um, limited and uh, we focus on financial services. We do not have multiple pathways for young people to provide quality jobs for our young people, we should not just uh, create jobs. We should uh, allow diversification in our economy so that we can have more choices for our young people. In the 45th year plan of the country, uh, we see an opportunity from promoting um, quality jobs for our young people. And Hong Kong should develop into a four important uh, new hubs. And I think they can bring tremendous development opportunities for our young people. The question to ask is, are we ready to grasp the opportunities? In helping industries, the government will only talk about how much money has been spent. Uh, do we have uh, KPIs to measure whether these measures are effective? In 2018, uh, for instance, uh, in the budget, um, $10 billion was spent uh, to help esports. Well, a lot of money, uh, were 50% uh, of the money was spent on developing our money and uh, the 50% are for uh, exchange programs of our young people. Have we done anything to help this industry to develop, have we helped to enhance the management, marketing, streaming, etc. of uh, this industry. There must uh, be uh, multifaceted uh, policies to help a particular industry. And we should see whether we have uh, enough uh, talents to support development of a new industry. We have a mismatch of uh, jobs and people. Uh, we have a mismatch of vacancies and uh, the unemployed and many industries are saying that they cannot find the right people to do the jobs. So we must review our education system to see whether we are equipping our young people to um, fulfill the needs of the market so that we can have quality jobs for our young people. 
Hong Kong uh, must have um, the right education system, talent training, so that we can promote our mobility of our young people to address the problem of intergenerational poverty. So I think the best way to resolve poverty is quality jobs. We must pave the way for the future development of our young people. Thank you. Mr. Lai Tong Kuo. Madam Deputy, people often say that the more the government tries to tackle poverty, the poorer people became. And that was especially obvious under COVID. The low income individuals were fired or um, they or they did not um, receive any pay. <clears throat> the new people's party um, received um, requests for help from many SDU tenants. They didn't have money to pay rent, to buy food or to buy anti-epidemic supplies, etc. Under COVID, uh, Hong Kong has become um, a city of tragedies. While the government's anti-epidemic plans lacked flexibility and the procedures were cumbersome, the working family allowance, temporary unemployment relief, etc., cetera, um, were ineffective and the poor people had no help but to um, seek support through NGOs. A main reason was that um, the policies could not address um, changes in our society and it has failed to tackle poverty or redistribute wealth. And it has failed in achieving common wealth. The government must undergo um, a fundamental reform first to update the definition of poverty or the poverty line and based on the needs of different groups some flexible subsidy um, or support measures should be derived <clears throat> skills um, training should be provided training allowance or um, tax credit should be or tax allowance should be provided. The government should also minimize administrative costs in order to maximize um, the use of resources. The Labor and Welfare Bureau as um, the main policy maker should establish a timeline and roadmap for alleviating poverty and to um, consult LESHCO sufficiently and um, they should put their plans into action after that. Mr. Chen Siu Hong, thank you. I speak in support, um, in support of Mr. Bill Tang's original motion and some of the amendments proposed by other members. I believe there's a need to reform Hong Kong's poverty alleviation policies and strategies. The SAL government has established a number of policies in recent years but um, it is evident that they were ineffective. As a metropolis, we still have a lot of um, people living under poverty. According to the Poverty, Alle poverty Situation Report 2020, the um, pre-intervention poor population was 1.653 million and poverty rate was 23.6%. And um, the poor were living in poor conditions. Some were homeless, some had to live in SDU, some were um, scavenging um, waste paper. And in light of the black clad violence, especially um, many grassroots were suffering. A recent survey um, found that some young people in their 20s had to feed on leftovers, which was sad to see. These show that there's an imminent need to review our poverty alleviation strategies. I believe that one main reason 
was that um, we are only offering um, a clear cut um, intervention policy. The government has been resorting to code figures by quoting the, um, the payment or allowance levels given out and they thought this would tackle the issue. Instead, they should look at the root of the issue and truly help the poor. You should um, teach people how to fish rather than um, give them ready catch. I often visit grassroots families. A mother living in a subdivided unit told me that they did not want to apply for CSSA. They wanted to be independent, but um, if they go to work, no one would take care of their children. And as such, they have no choice but to take care of children at home and instead rely on CSSA. I understand the plight of these single mothers. And at the same time, I see the limitations in the government's policies. Apart from offering cash allowance to the poor, they should provide um, child, providing childcare services to release the productivity of single parent families. That way they can um, make a living in a dignified manner while contributing to our society. Can the government offer job matching services for these single parent families so that they can secure um, jobs with shorter working hours? I think um, such measures will be far more effective than just giving out cash and prove to be popular. So in drawing up policies in the future, the government should um, dispose with old thinking and instead embrace new directions. The mainland has been using a scientific and um, targeted approach in fighting poverty. And in as little as 10 years, they have um, achieved common health and overcome the issue of absolute poverty. So um, the SAR government should learn from the mainland government by analyzing the situation on a macro level and drawing up targeted strategies and to um, deepen their current work. The government must realize that expensive rent is one key reason for poverty. The government has sought to increase the supply of public housing, but um, if we see a lot of, if we have a lot of working poor, then the mechanism for re reviewing statutory minimum pay should be refined and support for grassroots families should be reinforced. And that would help tackle Hong Kong's poverty issue in a targeted manner. So in the policy making process, the government should be um, more um, open-minded and grasp the um, pulse of the society. That way they can draw more effective policies and that is the only way the poor can become self-reliant and eventually we can achieve common prosperity in Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Um, Dr. Tan Yue Hung, thank you. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of Mr. Bill Tang's motion on reforming Hong Kong's poverty alleviation policies and strategies as a developed economy and a, and a top international financial center. We still have more than 1 million people living under poverty. It's either um, an issue with our statistics or um, poverty is indeed a serious problem in Hong Kong. So um, regardless, this is a problem that needs to be solved. Poverty alleviation requires a targeted and accurate approach. A number of lawmakers talked about adopting an accurate or targeted approach. We must focus on the key groups and areas or districts in terms of targeted groups. Um, We have 1.3 million elderly people in Hong Kong, making up 19% um, of our total population. By 20, after 2040, the elderly population would exceed one third. 
if we do not adopt, if we do not tackle elderly poverty properly, that would create a great strain on our fiscal reserves every year. In the year 2020, half the newly poor um, were unemployed. So um, families who enter poverty due to unemployment, um, they, these people could well be unemployed again. And um, given COVID and the um, changes or structural changes due to COVID, many temporarily unemployed could become um, permanently or unemployed for the long term. And um, so we must help these um, people find employment. The third approach is to um, support families with multiple children. Some families have multiple children. Many of these households only have one working member and they are the sole breadwinner. And among the working members, only about um, some 50% were working full time. So for these families, um, they deserve even more attention and more resources should be allocated. That way um, parents from these families can go to work and help um, prevent cross-generational poverty. My second point is to um, do more with the industries. Um, we have been offering um, cash relief. We do have a fiscal um, uh, reserve, but if we continue to rely on um, relief, well, that's not the way to go. We should in instead look to boost the industries and that way um, income could be boosted So that is how we achieve um, poverty alleviation on the long run. Thank you. Mr. Wong Kwok. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I thank Mr. Tang Kap Yu of FTU for sponsoring this motion so that we can discuss this very important social issue. I support the motion. I'd like to talk about the uh, working poor in Hong Kong because uh, this is uh, one of the major sources, major causes of poverty in Hong Kong. Uh, our workers rely on their hard work. Unfortunately, they are not uh, given the right reward. Well, it's hard in this world to ensure that you are fairly rewarded for your labor. I think uh, this is uh, what is faced by most employees in Hong Kong. We understand that there is a distortion of the market and also um, dominance by the uh, capitalists, but then the government is also um, corporate in this regard. The government's outsourcing of low-skilled jobs is one of the causes of uh, poverty. Now, the LCSD, the Housing Department, the uh, GPA, and uh, MVHD are the major departments outsourcing their jobs. They, in total, employ over 40,000 outsource workers, accounting for 25% of um, the uh, workforce and the government. And on average, uh, they only receive $41 per hour and they are in the lowest five percentile in terms of income. The government has, uh, has done nothing. It has outsourced its responsibility to serve the community. There is no proper monitoring of the contractors. So our uh, treasury is not really saving money and we've seen a deterioration in quality service and uh, also workers are being deployed. Now, to ensure common prosperity, we must do away with unfair system. The statutory minimum wage uh, was in place, has been in place since 2011. And right now, the level is 37.50. The government wants to 
protect the income of uh, grassroots, but it has overlooked the uh, erosion of wages by inflation. We want uh, the minimum wage to be reviewed once a year instead of once every two years. Now, uh, the minimum wage was um, recently frozen and the uh, lowest income makers have seen four years of their wages frozen. And the government has been a very uh, lax in ensuring the welfare of our workers. How can people be happy here? One out of every five people in Hong Kong is poor. We have 1.49 million poor people in Hong Kong, gaining coefficient 0 0.539, the uh, highest among developed economies. We must not turn a blind eye to this situation. We must um, formulate better policies and have a roadmap and timetable for improving the situation. The government must do away with this outsourcing system for non-skilled works as soon as possible so that we can improve the state of employment. The government must improve uh, the statutory minimum wage mechanism so that we can address the problem of the working poor at source. To put it simply, the uh, capitalists can make money. Our uh, workers uh, should make enough money to support their families. Under the new system, we want the government to grab this opportunity. Instead of this uh, laser fare policy, it can uh, uh, it can uh, take care of the needs of our workers. Thank you. May I remind members that according to the house rules, we have to end by five twenty-two today. So at around 4.30 p.m., I'll invite the mover of the motion to speak on the amendments, and then I will deal uh, with the remaining procedures. Mr. Edward Leung, thank you. I speak to support this motion and also amendments by my party members. I think uh, this has been a thorny issue for the community. There is a, this very important term in the motion, and that is poverty alleviation. We talked about poverty alleviation often enough, but it's the government doing a competent job. Now we must ensure that our policies can alleviate the situation of uh, the poor. Unfortunately, people have uh, query our poverty alleviation policies. Things have gone from bad to worse. In preparing uh, this draft, uh, this uh, speech, I have done some homework. And how uh, do we uh, fix the uh, standard payment under CSSA? And I was told that it was under the Social Security uh, Index, which is reviewed once every five years. That sounds good, but the uh, devil is in the details because the basis came uh, from 1995. And then the every five year review is built on this basis. So uh, any um, adjustment can only uh, be the basis or should, should, is based on the consumption power back in 1996. But back then things that were not necessities may be Necessities now, such as mobile phones and uh, laptops, back then they were not daily necessities, but that's no longer the case now. So uh, is there any uh, room for new elements to be added into the index? The answer is no. So whether you review the index once every five years or two years, the actual needs cannot be reflected. And the only way you can cope is to skip a few meals in order to buy a mobile phone and to skip a few more meals in order to um, get data coverage. This is far from desirable. Uh, during the epidemic, we were all scrambling for uh, various uh, supplies. Do you know how grassroots fare? 
well, they have to uh, wash uh, and reuse uh, their face masks, not because they are environmental conscious, it's rather they cannot afford a new mask every day. In uh, 2020, do you know how much a face mask, a surgical mask was selling? And when the epidemic was at its worst, uh, food prices went up and it was already difficult for the low income families, not to mention the uh, CSSA recipients. Have we adjusted the payments to catch up with prices? Well, we have uh, criticized uh, the system numerous times, but the only response from the government is, the government has no intention to review the current system, which has uh, um, been uh, uh, established and working well. Does the government have the will to improve the situation? Now, the basis for uh, the index has never been reviewed, and we don't even know what is included. I hope after the uh, sitting, the secretary can give us a reply in writing. Uh, the elements included in the index. I'm sure they did not take into account the need for a mobile phone, uh, data coverage, and etc. I hope the government can uh, rectify its mindset so that we can really uh, take care of the needs of our people. Thank you, Mr. Chao Siu Chong. Thank you, President. Yes, I think uh, it's a people's uh, mindset that they should save for rainy days and uh, to uh, raise a family to take care of them when they are old. However, the um, working poverty problems problem is getting more serious. And uh, young families find it hard to fend for themselves. So how can they or take care of elderly parents. Um, these um, young adult children have caused uh, worries for their elderly parents. I support Mr. Chen Kapil's motion and also the amendments. We must mobilize all resources to have a multifaceted uh, policy to alleviate poverty so that gradually we can do away with intergenerational poverty and we can have common prosperity. We must be targeted in our measures. We should uh, study how we can achieve targeted poverty alleviation. I hope the future chief executive can uh, work on this. Targeted Poverty alleviation means are uh, using a scientific approach to have targeted management to help targeted groups. This can help us to identify the poor population and to administer the um, administer effective and targeted policies. We should relieve working poverty among our young people. And I think we should adopt a three-pronged approach. First, for the disadvantaged groups, we should provide continuous safety net by greatly increasing supply of public housing. We should increase the uh, rental subsidy for those waiting for public health. And uh, we should also uh, relieve or relax the conditions for uh, working family allow us. The government should provide more training and vocational training. We should also uh, change uh, the um, uh, impression of our young people on, about some jobs available in the market. Thirdly, we must integrate into the country's development and GBA development. We must uh, improve our um, industrial structure so we can provide quality jobs to ensure upward mobility of our young people. And over 80% of our unemployed 
families are in dire situation. So we must have an effective system for helping the unemployed. Last, I'd like to talk about the statutory minimum wage, which is far too low, is not giving our lowest income workers any dignity, and it will aggravate the poverty issue. I hope the government can review the uh, adjustment mechanism to be more effective so that the uh, workers in the lowest stratum of society can uh, see reasonable improvement in their wage level. By improving the SMW, I'm sure we can uh, be very effective in alleviating poverty. Now, officials still have to work hard because we still have poverty. I hope the next chief executive can work hard so that we can end poverty here and have common prosperity. Thank you. Ms. Lillian Kuo. 